Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Bull Charts User Group webinar. We're getting underway now. Tonight, uh, one of our user group members will be sharing some slides and, and maybe bull charts as well. Please remember the disclaimer tonight. Here's the disclaimer. Please note that any information presented or discussed tonight is only opinion. Uh, it's not advice. It shouldn't be acted upon. It's not our recommendation to follow any of the strategies that you might see. Well, having said that, if you do go ahead and implement it and you make some money, by all means, come back and let us know um, and share the winnings. We'd love to help you. Here's the agenda I prepared for last week's Melbourne meeting on Tuesday of last week. Uh, tonight, our webinar is on Monday night. Uh, for last week's meeting, we had a discussion all about exit strategies and I shared a presentation that I had put together a few years ago and I tweaked last year for representation um, for, for one of Frank Watkins groups. And we might do the a repeat of the exit strategies here in the webinar in, a, in four weeks time, for the December session, because tonight's session that David Woodside is about to present, uh, all about two trading strategies, I'm hoping to record successfully and then share that in the Melbourne group in three weeks time. There's the minutes document from last week's meeting where we had five people who could attend and a couple who couldn't and said they would have been if they could have been. Uh, don't forget we've got our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at bull charts, where we've got more than 30 videos and we'll add to that after tonight's session with the recording from tonight. Now, last month, Des Bleakley talked about Bullscript for us. His presentation in this webinar I recorded. Uh, it took me a few days to get around to editing that and snipping the front and end off it and chopping out some stuff in the middle that didn't need to be there. It's now available to watch on our YouTube channel. So you can watch that. It's an hour and a half, at least an hour and a half long. As I said, in the Melbourne meeting last week, we talked about exit strategies. The slides from that presentation are available. There's a link there in the minutes. You can download that and have a look. Uh, and for Toolbox members, you can see that plus the speaker notes in the presentations area of my share market toolbox. The discussion in the exit strategies session last week touched on these major headings, uh, subheadings, subtopics, whatever you want to call them, a whole lot of different possibilities for exit strategies and down over the page. An extra couple of comments were scaling down instead of quitting a position. Uh, some people like to do when the time's right. Someone said we should avoid capital raisings because they can damage a market position. Uh, and someone else said another exit approach is to ask yourself this question. If you've got a position, have a look at it, the one that you're holding, look at the chart and ask yourself, if I didn't hold it, would I buy it today? And if the answer is no, then maybe it's an opportune time to exit. Um, as I said, we can pick up the discussion on exit strategies here in the webinar in a few weeks time when we have the December session. Uh, so David, at your leisure, you can share your screen. Uh, and while you do that, I'll explain to the, uh, to the audience that you've been participating in our Bull Charts user group webinars for, I've lost track, a few years now, and done more than a couple of presentations, which are up on the YouTube channel for viewing. So that's really good. And tonight, you've got two presentations to share with us. No one presentation, but two trading strategies from two well-known identities in the industry. So David, welcome. I'll ask everyone right. to join with me and welcome you and hand over to you. Thanks, David. Take it away. Oh. <laughs> okay, Robert, before we get too excited, can you see the screen? I can. It's perfect. Can right. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. And, and what I want to do tonight is just go through a couple of uh, strategies that I've 
found on the internet over the last six or 12 months. And uh, I think they might be of interest. And uh, so we'll, we'll go through them. And I, I, I've got to say that um, this is a, the picture is a windmill museum at Penong in, in South Australia. That's west of Sejuna, heading out towards the, the uh, Australian Bight. And I, I being, being uh, an ex-farmer, I have a bit of an interest, interest in windmills. And I've got to say that the first 18 years of my life, I had a fairly unreliable windmill that, that supplied me with do domestic water. And then uh, we went to electricity in a pressure pump and it was very reliable. So um, that's what windmills do and wind. So, uh, so we're going to look at two different chart setups. And I came across this proverb when I was travelling overseas and I thought it was pretty apt to tonight. So it is, be patient. Everything will happen with time. The windmill does not go looking for the wind. So, and there were lots of winds in, uh, lots of windmills in Namibia. So, so that's uh, my little uh, sermon for the night. Anyway, disclaimer. This presentation does include any advice. They are my thoughts and for your general awareness. No recommendation to take any action. Uh, always consult a licensed advisor. And the big word is no advice. This picture I took out at Cameron's Corner, which is where New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia join. And there's a road out there and we came across all these emus with ch young chicks wandering around. So I thought that's quite a good picture. So that's, that's, my, that's my picture of the day. Right. Let's move on. Uh, this is a chart of the All Ordinaries. Uh, it's a line chart for the last eight years, and it's a, a 130 EMA using a Donchian channel. And what I really wanted to say was the current market's pretty tough, and I'm sure you all know. There are a few trending stocks. We've got rising interest rates, high inflation, and political unrest in Europe and the Middle East. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. So. This is the sort of area where, where you want to be looking for trending stocks. Uh, this is uh, back in 2017-18, again in uh, 2019, before we had the COVID crash in 2020. But then it all started to happen again and right through till 21. But uh, from there, uh, we've got something like we had uh, back in 18, the COVID crash uh, the last year and now. So. There's not much excitement in the market, so there are very few trending stocks. So, but uh, probably as, as um, Roberts always said, uh, in a downturn, it's a good time to be looking at uh, at the charts and just understanding what's happening. So, this picture is taken at Lake Gardner in South Australia. It's actually Australia's third largest salt lake. Uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, Lake Eyre is the largest one. Lake Torrens is the second one. And Lake Gairdner is pretty unknown to most people, but it's it's about 170 k's long and about 50 k's wide. So, and you can exit from a couple of places. And every year they have speed racing on there, but not with that water. <laughs> anyway, on with it. So, how do uh, bull chart users set up their charts? I'm always interested in it. What scans do they use? Uh, what can we learn from other charters? And I think that's we can learn a lot. Uh, there's various sources, uh, print, online, and YouTube. And I've found a couple of interesting ideas that I think um, you, you might want to do some more research on. So, and I've, these these are the two charters that I'm going to talk about tonight. Just before we start, now this is another picture I took in Lake Ballard in Western Australia between. Leonora and Kalgoorlie out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. There are 50 of these cast iron statues standing on a lake. Uh, it's called the largest uh, outdoor uh, art exhibition in the world. It's quite fascinating. Anyway, this, this uh, presentation is my interpretation of how the systems work. I'm not promoting any system. I don't have access to their selection criteria. All I've done is l l watched a few YouTube videos, done some reading, and I've come up with what I think they do. So if if in doubt, please do your own research, DYOR. And for additional, I've given you some links at the end of this presentation for you to go and have a look at. So oh, I've got my yellow arrows. Anyway, the, 
the two charters, Jason McIntosh from Sydney and Carl Kapalinga from Perth. So the question is, what do these two systems have in common? Well, the answer is pretty easily. They both use daily charts, moving averages, crossovers, and, and a few other supporting information. So we're, first of all, we're going to look at is Jason McIntosh. Both of these are trend following systems. He's looking for rising stocks and managing risk and exit. His main uh, uh, criteria, he's looking, he's using daily charts with a 50, 100 EMA crossover and a wide trailing stop. He also runs a subscription service and, uh, and a market commentary. And he does an end of week market commentary on YouTube and does appear on Ausbiz from time to time. This is his website, motiontrader.com.au. And I think you'll find quite some interesting material there as well. So, so his, his stock selection criteria. He scans the ASX uh, uh, daily and uh, looking for stocks over 30, 30 cents. He doesn't want to, he, he's not interested in the penny dreadfuls as he calls them. He wants stocks that have got some potential. He looks for stocks making a, a, a 70 day high a close greater than the 50 EMA and the EMA, 50 EMA greater than the 100 EMA. He uses a wide ATR trailing stop, eight to 10 he talks about sort of that level. He wants plenty of room in the early stages for the stock to develop. He looks for long-term winners. Uh, he looks for, for long-term winners uh, greater than 12 months. And, and one of his big winners was Jumbo International, that's the lottery people, GIN, uh, the ASX code, and it, he rode that from $1.50 to eight, eighteen fifty in three years. Another one that he just recently exited is uh, Mad, that's um, Mater Industries. They were suppliers of services to the mining industry. He went from a dollar to $5.70 over two years. But he also accepts small losses for big wins. Uh, a good example he talks about in one of his YouTube videos recently is he bought Dow at 420 and then he sold out at 370 after four months going nowhere. He looks for stocks at the lower end of the market, more risk but bigger gains. Uh, uh, John, the John, JLG, John Ling Group, uh, Gentrack, Pepper Money and Lindsay Industries, LAU, they're transport people. That's the sort of stock he's looking for. So his charts, he uses uh, OHLC bars, open, high, low, close bars. He uses, as I said, two moving averages, 50 and 100 EMA. So what do his charts look like? Well, I'm going to use this example of AGL, and then I'll look at how I've modified his chart to suit me. We'll, we'll also look at a, a, um, some other ASX stocks, Dow, MAD, CX, CXL, and uh, Macmillan, Shapeshare, MMS. So this is what his chart looks like. Now, for a start, I've got to say, this is the uh, the trailing stop. Normally, he doesn't show that on his charts. I put it there because I think you need to see it in the context of his 50 and, uh, and uh, these are these 50 and 100 EMA uh, uh, moving averages. And he looks for, uh, so I've stuck this in as a possible trailing stop. It's a guess. Um, he might use 10 or 11. I suspect uh, he would have ex exited this trade about here. I don't know, as I say, I'm guessing. I know that he talked about entering this trade about here. And, and the reason he entered, entered the trade is because he had the crossover here. And that was the signal for him to start looking at stocks rising and, and being on a 70 day high. Um, whether he would have exited, he would have bought it about $8.60. And I'm saying he would have sold at about 10.50. I don't know, it's a guess. He may still be in it, but the way it's trending, I suspect it's not. But uh, so as I say, this is a, this ATR is a bit of my guess. Certainly the 50 and 100 is not, that's what he talks about quite regularly. And most times his graph just simply shows these two moving averages and uh, the uh, open, high, low, close bars. And, and he, if he'd taken the sold at 10.50, he would have made a profit of about 28% over six months. 
Here's another one that he talks about that he made a loss on. Uh, once again, we got the 100 EMA and the 50 EMA. Once again, I've got an estimated uh, uh, ATR trailing stop, which I'll, I'll talk about later, which one it is. Uh, and once again, we've got the crossover. He would have bought at about 430 and he would have sold here at about $3.70. He definitely talks about selling. He doesn't, I don't know, I'm estimating that his price was around 370. He might have been a bit lower, but that's, uh, and, and he would have had a loss of about 12% over three months. But he's quite happy to accept that sort of loss. Now this is, uh, this is um, the, the Mater Group, MAD. Uh, it's, this is a semi-log scale and uh, this is one of his m more profitable trades. Once again, I've, I've put in the estimated uh, uh, ATR trailing stop. Uh, I don't know what he uses, but he certainly talked about buying M MAD or MAD at just under a dollar in, in back in August 21. And he added to his position on the way up. And I know that he sold in October 23 for around 560. Uh, as I said, the exact figures I'm not sure of, but around a profit of around 485% for 26 months. A pretty good return, I think you would agree. Um, but you can see that all, all the time that the stock was moving up, uh, the 50 was greater than, than the 100. But it's only just here that it started to turn down. But his signal was when it, it the ATR, crossed the ATR at trailing stop. This one is uh, CXL, uh, a, once again, a semi-log chart. And you can see the, the, the 50 and the, and the 100 EMA. Uh, and he would, have, he would have bought around here at about... Uh, uh, 90 cents, 80 cents, 85 cents, and uh, he would have sold up here at about 550, something like that. So his estimated profit was about 470 over 25 months. So th that's the way he sort of uh, works. So. so I've modified his chart by using coloured fill. Uh, I've also added a, a 50 100 uh, EMA ribbon. And I've added 50 day high. I've gone for 50 day high rather than 70, mainly because it's it just I prefer it. And I've also used coloured candles. I, uh, if if the uh, closes above 50 EMA, it's, it's blue, and if it's below that, it's red. And I've also added a trailing stop. This is a Wells Wilder. I found it off the Bull Chance forum. Uh, I think it was put in by Maximo. He's a, he's a very good contributor in that forum. And uh, that's where I found it in bullcharts.com AU forum. So oh, I've got my little ye yellow arrows, but anyway, that's the that's the snop. So so basically, once again, this is his chart for AGL. This is what his chart looks like. This is what we've, my chart looks like. Same chart really, but it's just a bit more colour and a bit more gloss. So, and once again, you can see how that the uh, the the, the fifteen hundred starting to narrow here. This is the same trailing stop, and uh, so we got the, and the, here's the fifty day high. This is and this really, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Is just uh, the, the the top band of a Donchian channel, fifty days, and I have moved it two positions to the left just to clear uh, clear the, the candles. Uh, and I've added that these are coloured candles, blue. Uh, obviously the dark candles are, are down days and the, and the light ones are up days. And uh, as I say, once it gets under 50 EMA, it goes to red. And here's the crossover. Here's the buy point and here's the Here's the sell point, 25% over six months. And here's the ribbons down the bottom. And also down the bottom here, I've got a, a on balance volume with a 20 EMA, which is another good, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, indicator that you can uh, keep an eye on price. So um, we've, we've modified the uh, the, Jason McIntosh chart with these indicators, coloured fill and such. So. so how do we put all this on the chart? I mean, it's, most people probably understand it, but I just, we just quickly go through uh, what how we did it. 
to, to put an indicator on the chart on, in Bull Script, you just simply right click on the chart, select insert indicator, and then go to the indicator you choose. And from there, you just follow follow on from it. So there's, I think there's, there's quite a bit of information out there now on how to put indicators in bull charts. And there's just a couple of them. Uh, plenty of YouTube links and all the rest of it. So there's plenty of information out there to uh, put it. So, so this is one of the, one of the uh, this is simple, the simple moving average crossover. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go through everything, but the inputs in this case, uh, it, the short and long are, are exponential. Uh, exponential and uh, we're going for a 50 period and a hundred and all of this bull script does the calculations and this this fills, fills the uh, between the two moving averages and you can put markers there if you want to and all the rest of it uh, but that's up to you so that's pretty pretty simple here's the moving uh, average crossover I've Given the citation to Des Bleakley, I, I've got a couple, and I think uh, Des is the one I used in this case. Uh, once again, it's a moving average of 50 exponential close and a close uh, 100 uh, uh, EMA uh, exponential, and then the fill colours as well. So, once again, uh, go and have a look and, and a play around with it. Now, the highest high variable line is simply uh, an indicator based on the upper Donchian ch uh, channel of the uh, Donchian channel. Uh, I've just modified this by simply taking the uh, the higher the the top line, and in, in this case, it's exponential time period is 50 solid, and this comes up and it plots a line above your uh, your candle or candlestick, and it's a solid line. I actually have said move it. To two positions to the left simply to just clear away from the candles and just give you a better look at the uh, at the close. This is the world's world of volatility stop. Uh, I've attributed it to Maximo. I think that's where I got it from. But this is this is the the formula that I use. And uh, uh, as I say, Maximo's made a, a large number of contributions in the, in the pull charts forum too. So that's the trailing stop indicator. And the coloured candles, I'm not sure where I got this one. I, I haven't attributed it to anyone, but that's that's uh, the the, um, the thing that allows you to colour the candles. Uh, in this case, uh, if they're above a certain moving average, it's blue. If they're below a certain, uh, you can have red, but you can choose green or whatever whatever colour you like. So that's the coloured candles. And lastly, I've looked at what would you do for a possible scan criteria of a 70 day high. So based on Jason's talks, this is what I've come up with. You're looking for a close greater than 30 cents, a market cap greater than 20, 20 million, trades greater than 40 in any of the last five bars. I always like to look at the previous trades just to see what's happening. Uh, Des Blakey likes to show the value traded. Uh, I also like to look at the sector, whether it's materials or health or whatever. Um, show the price percentage change over five bars, that's a week. And th this is uh, where it gets a little tricky. I'm looking for a high, high variable line. This is my Donchian, Donchian, modified Donchian channel. I'm looking for it to be rising. So I'm looking for the Donchian uh, high variable line, which I've called it, be greater than, than the, the, the top of the previous bar and the last two bars. So I'll, I'll explain that a bit closer when we get to it. And I also look for the close greater than the 50 bar and and the close greater than the close of 10 bars, uh, 10 bars ago, meaning I'm looking for shares that are trending up. And and a movie average, the 50, 100 EMA is plus, plus 50, 100 is true. In other words, once again, it's trending up. So we'll have a look at a few trades that, that Jason's done and that he talks about. Uh, he's pretty prolific on the uh, YouTube. He's got a, uh, he's been doing a whole series recently with Self Wealth, and uh, they're quite interesting. So we'll look at some of his successes, some of his failures, uh, some longer period charts, and uh, the the stocks include Macmillan, Shakespeare, JLG. Fletcher, uh, Building Industries, uh, GTK, Peppermint Money, and Lindsay. Trans 
industry. So the first one is uh, Macmillan Shakespeare. Uh, once again, uh, the, the coloured candles, uh, 50 day high, uh, and as I say, uh, and the trailing stop here. Now, who would have, or I would have bought uh, around here? You can see that this uh, 50 day high has risen. It's higher than it was two, two bars ago. So, would have bought it at about uh, uh, $13.50 or something. And uh, he would have sold once once it, the, these uh, red candles or, or, or day downs, a strong day da days down, uh, it was a sell. So, uh, about 40% over 13 months. A reasonable return. I think you would agree. This one is uh, the John Ling Group. They're a uh, building and uh, construction. Uh, once again, I put in a trailing stop that I think he would use. Uh, it's probably not quite what he uses, but here, here again, we have the 5100 EMA and fill, and we have the 5100 EMA ribbon. And down here, we've got the on balance volume and moving averages. Probably that probably doesn't show a great deal. But he would have put, uh, he would have bought around here, well, with the, around the, the about a dollar twenty or something like that, and uh, he would have sold up here at about uh, eight dollars uh, seven fifty something like that. So a profit of five hundred sixty over 40, 41 months. The question I've got to ask is, there was a fairly strong down here. Uh, would he have sold? He, he argue, his argument is he likes to give them plenty of width in, in this, what he calls the early stages of an uptrend. Um, so he obviously didn't, he wasn't triggered. And uh, in this case, it shows mine being triggered. I think his must have been a little wider than mine. But anyway, that's the uh, way it is. This one's Fletcher Building uh, Industries. Uh, and uh, he got a buy order here uh, at about. Uh, 5.40, 5.30, something like that. And um, it, did, it went sideways for a few weeks and then boom, down, it, down it went and came in with a bad report and he would have sold uh, at under about 4.40 uh, and a loss of 13% over six weeks. But as he said, that's, that's quite acceptable. Um, this one is uh, GTK at, I think, there's some sort of computer people that, on transport and computer. He's currently in this stock. He talks about it. Um, he he bought it here when it when it made, made a new high at about uh, two dollars thirteen, uh, and he's followed it all the way up here to, to about uh, four dollars seventy two, and he's in profit at the moment of about one hundred and twenty percent. As he said, he's not selling it because it hasn't broke breached his uh, trailing stop. So that's uh, Gen Track. Peppermint Money was another one that he bought recently. Uh, he would have, once again, it, it's, it had a new high here at about a, a dollar, yeah, dollar oh, 67 cents. I can't read that. Anyway, uh, but nonetheless, uh, a loss of about 24% over 90 days. And uh, here's his trailing stop, breached, and, and he was out. Small loss. So this is the last one, uh, Lindsay Industries, Trent, their transport people. Uh, and you can see here's his trailing stop. And uh, he would have bought here at about uh, 50 cents. And uh, he would have sold at about a oh, dollar, dollar. So he made about 140% over 21 months. But it, uh, I think there's a classic double top up here. And uh, uh, I don't know where it's gone from there. So, but that's 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 a share that, that a stock that he's uh, been quite profitable in. Now, the second one, Carl Capalinga from Perth. He's he's a market analyst, online broker with Think Market. He uses both fundamental and technical analysis. He does a weekly market commentary and stock crests on YouTube, and he does appear on Osby's TV from time to time. His daily charts are black and white, and he uses candles, and he looks for candle patterns. And he uses two moving average crossovers, a short term and a long term, and they're Fibonacci based. Oh, I've got my yellow arrows. Anyway.
Anyway, um, so the two crossover bands that he uses is a 2134 EMA, that's his, what he calls his short one, and his, and his long ones are 144, 233 EMA long. And they're coloured. He coloured them to indicate short and long-term demand and supply. His exit's based on band colour, candle patterns and price action around the 2134 EMA and the long-term 144, 233 moving average. When the light green turns to red, and I'll show you what that means in a minute, there's no demand. In his trading, he scales in and out of his trades by one third portion. In other words, if he's going to invest $10,000 in a stock, he'll probably buy about 3,000, then about 3,000, then about 3,000. Uh, and the same when he's when he's stock starting to, to stall, he will start to sell in third portions. Now, I've modified his system by using coloured candles and a coloured ribbon, but other than that, it's the same bands and everything else. So, so this is what his chart looks like. This is, once again, AGL, and you can see he's using uh, black and white candles, and this is a 20... 20 this is a uh, short-term 2134 EMA, and this is his long-term uh, 144, 233 EMA. And in this case, he uses dark green and, and red. Uh, here he uses uh, light green and, and red. This is supposed to be a lighter colour than that. Doesn't look like it, does it? Yeah. I'll have to check that. Anyway, once again, uh, on balance uh, indicator. And... Um, so and he looks for the crossover of the short over the long, and this is where he starts to get interested. And he looks at the candle patterns, and uh, uh, he he says that once you the colour light green changes to to orange, no demand, and uh, prices will continue to fall. And he's probably it's pretty simple, isn't it? So this is his chart. Once again, I've modified it with the coloured candles. Um, we've got the colour candles, we've got the short term EMA uh, and the 2134 ribbon and the long term 144.233 ribbon. And he would have bought here at about 820, something like that. And he's very conscious of uh, big down days, uh, big red or, or, or uh, dark candles. And uh, for him, that would have been a, a sell. As soon as he saw that, that candle, he'd be out. Uh, that's and of course, as it turned out, it's uh, that's the, it's was a good decision. So uh, it's an, once again a profit of about thirty percent over six months. This is a LAU modified using a semi log. I don't know whether Carl bought these or not, but I'm just simply using his chart as a uh, an example. Um, and once again, the coloured candles. He would have bought it at about forty cents. And he would have sold. He would have been watching these candles here under the uh, under this uh, light green, and his profit would have been about 140. And certainly, once the candles cross into into this region, it's definitely a sell. This is his long-term moving average. This is his short-term moving average. This is uh, John Ling Group again. Once again, I don't know whether Carl bought them or not, but I'm simply using his chart as an example of. Uh, uh, how how he would have or could have traded it, as I say, it's my interpretation, and he would have bought it at, here at about a dollar thirty, and he probably would have. I, I don't know whether he would have added. The question I got to ask is what he would have done here. I I suspect he would have sold out and probably bought back in again, and uh, but he definitely would have sold once this um, came down below the the long term moving average. So he would have had a profit of about 520, similar to uh, Jason McIntosh. Now, this is a, a short-term, uh, long-term uh, chart of BHP, which I think is interesting because in this case, it shows both long-term and, and short-term going nowhere. It did have a little bit of a run-up, but I don't know what it did today. I suspect more or the miners came back, so it's probably back to uh, trading sideways. So there's not much joy in BHP at the moment. This is a, a chart of uh, Mad, a Mata Group. Uh, once again, a semi-log, and I'm guessing that Carl, if he was buying, would have bought about here, down about a dollar twenty, dollar dollar ten, and uh, this is his 
long-term rising EMA. This is his short-term rising EMA. And uh, how we would have handled it here, I'm not sure. I suspect, once again, he may have sold out and then bought in again. But it says he would have had a profit of about 440 over 26 months. Now, I, I don't. I presume most of you know you can you can put uh, U.S. stocks onto your, onto a bull chart. So all you have to do is simply type in U.S. dot NVDA, which stands in this case is Nvidia. That's the uh, uh, the computer uh, AI stock that's been the, the big thing. And uh, so, if you want to put in Tesla, you just simply type in U.S. dot TSLA, the and it'll it'll uh, bring up the chart for you with the volume and everything. So I, I use it quite a bit just to see what some of the American stocks are doing. But anyway, back to the car would have if he if he was trading the stock, which I'm not sure he is, but nonetheless he would have bought it at about 200, and he would have sold it at about 420. Um, how he would have handled this here, I'm not sure, but certainly there are a lot of uh, down days and he becomes very um, concerned when he starts to see that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, I'm making the assumption rightly or wrongly, but he would have been out about here. I suspect he probably would have been out a bit earlier, about 450. Now, this is an earlier chart of NVIDIA. And this is what um, what the, the bull chart looks like. This is back in 2022. It had a peak of about 300, 350, and then it started to fall away. His chart, he's been able to um, uh, set up his indicators to look like this. So you can see that when the price uh, falls in, into the, uh, the the 2134 EMA, the, 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 um, the indicator changes color. I haven't been able to do that in bull charts. I'm sure it can be done. But uh, that's what he relies on. When he starts to see an orange here, he becomes very wary and, and big black candles like that, that's time for him to move. So that's the difference between Carl's charts uh, and, and using on bull charts. But I suspect somewhere along the line, this could be programmed into a bull chart. So, so, so that's, uh, that's, I'm just simply saying, if you look at his charts, go and have a look, you'll see you'll start to see that his long-term and short-term, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, change colour. So and he's been being, it's been quite, quite smartly done. So so finally, I hope you find it of interest. Uh, bull charts is very versatile. Um, we have got four more slides. Uh, they're mainly bull script with various indicators. So we'll just have a quick look at them. And uh, this picture was taken, we have an orange festival every year in Griffith and they construct all these uh, uh, objects out of oranges. And this, in this case, this is a piano, obviously. And But we have uh, all sorts of uh, figures and uh, animals and whatever. So that's uh, just a little on the side. So this is all the supporting information uh, from Jason McIntosh's uh, Motion Trader. Uh, and, you know, what, you, you're welcome to go and have a look and, and do your own research. I've also put together a possible screen criteria for Carl Capolinga, quite similar, similar to what we saw in Jason. I won't go through it all, but that's the sort of thing you, you would set up. Uh, the next one, uh, this is just simply the moving average 2134 MA indicator, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and there's the, and also if he does, uh, Carl uses the MACD ribbon. Uh, it's uh, the, based on Linda Rasky, 31016, uh, rather than the, the, the 91226, I think it is. So that, that is the formula for the uh, Linda Rasky uh, 31016 uh, MACD indicator. He uses it from time to time, but not all the time. So finally, this is a veteran car rally we had in Griffith uh, back a couple of months ago. Uh, the youngest car was 108 years. The eldest was about 123, I think. Uh, an amazing collection, over 100 of them. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you. David, <laughs> thank you. Well done. I, uh, and once again, David, thank you very much for putting that together.
um, I'm guessing that you've learned something from doing the research and gathering all the thoughts and maybe you've tweaked your own strategy uh, as well as given others something to think about. So, David, thanks again. Right. Yeah, you're right. I, I, look, I, I, I certainly do use it, but I've modified it a bit. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so as I say, it's what I've gleaned. It's, I, I'm not privy to the thing, but, but I, I think it's interesting. It shows the versatility of pull charts. Pull charts is a very versatile program. It is. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Very good. Thanks. Uh, let's get back to the agenda and work through the agenda. Uh, as I said, next month in our December webinar, we can have a chat about exit strategies, the same as we did last week in the Melbourne meeting. Uh, the ASX share trading game, which finished Thursday last week, w was anybody playing the game? Are they, is anyone interested in talking about it, asking questions or feedback or comments? There were five or 6,000, I think, people in the end. And the winner, um, who has not yet been declared, it always takes them a week or two to do that, the winner increased their $50,000 portfolio, funny money, to 110000 over the last 15, 16 weeks. So they more than doubled it. So they must have been on the ball, I think, or very lucky. I'm not sure which. Um, any comments, questions about the ASX share trading game? Nope. Okay. Let's move on. Bull charts, tips, and key features. As I said at the start of our session, I thought 51102 was the latest version of bull charts, but it's not. Uh, I'll show you. Um, download.bullcharts.com. If you go to the bull charts, home page and click on downloads. You get to log in and most of you would have done this and seen it. When you log in using your using your bull charts data login name, even though it says here 51102 is is the one that's available and what here's what's new. When you download it, that link actually installs 51106. I did that on my laptop last week. Uh, and there's not much difference between 102 and 106, uh, just some more maintenance release options to stabilize components and, and minor bug fixes. Uh, so 51106, even though it says 102. Uh, does anyone have any questions about bull charts? Issues you've got or can I do this or how does it do that? <laughs> what? Hello, Robert. Um, yes, Michael. I downloaded, uh, updated my version last week mm. and I couldn't see any difference in it mm. except for the only bug that I was picking up that that all the files that are in your uh, toolbar list at the bottom that you, you have, when I open the program, they're all out of view to the left of the window. So you've got to scroll them all back into view. What is it that's uh, out of view? So, so see, see where you've got um, US, um, US, US stock at the bottom. Yes, the file that name. can, yes. yes. They're all out of view to the left of the window. Um, and that didn't happen before. Oh, now so you I, can keep on scrolling them back into view. I've got one tab there at the bottom. Have you got several tabs across the bottom yeah, of your screen? I've got, I've got several, and um, yeah, now when the program opens, they're all the way out of sight. So you've got to scroll them back in. Um, that's interesting. I I never have more than three or four tabs down here, uh, and I've not heard of anybody having problems like that. I know if you do have too many down here and it fills up the window, then you do need to scroll. Um, I wonder what happens if I go like this. Um, once I 
once I scroll them back into oh. view, yep. they'll stay there and I can click on any one. But um, it's initially when you open the program, you can't see any of them. Ah. Hmm. If um, if that's a problem, I'd suggest you send an email to Brendan to the help desk and raise it with them. Maybe there's been a, an accidental change that's caused that to happen. Or well, initially, I was sort of doubting whether it updated anything because I couldn't see anything different. <laughs> yes. Uh, sometimes. The, the changes that they make will be uh, minor but behind the scenes to fix maybe a bug, in which case you might not see anything visual on the screen. Um, one way to check the detail is to have a look at your about bull charts information and see what it says in here about bull charts version or the DLLs. Uh, there might be changes there. Uh, but okay. then. It, but then to work out if anything's changed, you'd need to know what it was before you did the upgrade. Yeah. Mm, okay, that's interesting to hear that you've noticed that that difference. Uh, sorry, we can't help with that one. Any other questions or comments about bull charts or versions or whatever? Uh, if, if anybody is still running an earlier version, then uh, you might notice this particular feature, and it might be annoying you. Uh, near the top left corner of the screen is this overlay, price inf information overlay. Now, that was introduced a few versions ago. And a few people really didn't like it and and let fly. There is a an arrow there that you can use to collapse that information. Then it turns into a down arrow. Uh, but with the last couple of minor upgrades to bull charts, what happens is if you go to bull charts preferences, there's a new item here on this first general tab called advanced tooltip. So that's called an advanced tooltip. If you uncheck that box, then all of that disappears off the screen and it looks like the earlier versions. So if you're seeing that on your screen, then you don't have the absolute latest version and there is a way to get rid of it. Any other questions about bull charts? If not, should we have a quick look at stocks and sectors we were watching last week? Uh, bull charts, users, watching, dividend payers last week. And what I might do is I've got several charts open. You can see the tabs across the bottom. I'll go File, Close Workspace to close all of them. And we'll just open this, uh, sort by comment. Open this one and call double click. It'll open in using my default template. So Amcor went ex-dividend on the 21st of November. I I like looking at these. I've been doing this for a couple of years now. Uh, and every week, have a look to see what movements, what share price movements there have been in stocks that have gone ex-dividend. Uh, be, because we know the ex so-called experts tell us, they've been telling us for years, that when a stock goes ex-dividend, the share will probably fall by the amount of the dividend. Um, I found in the last two or three years that that's, that's absolute rubbish. There's no consistency with what happens to share prices at, at, during this time. And then once the ex-dividend period is gone, you, there's no way of predicting or anticipating what the share price might do next. See, in this case, Amcor was trending upwards, got too high, fell on the ex-dividend date, and it's since gone sideways. And these next few stocks are either going active last week or this week. There's Elders. It fell a little bit, then continued its its rally. New Farm, 
on the 22nd, that was last week. Uh, there was no way to anticipate the price movement there. ALS Limited, Grain Corp is going X in two days time. What will it do when it goes X? It's been trending higher uh, for the last few weeks. The big money is probably uh, thinking about selling out before it goes X div, and I'm guessing it'll fall before or on the X div date. And today might have been the start of that fall, like the banks have been doing the last few years. IFT, Infratil is going X in two days. Aristocrat Leisure, ALL. Uh, have a look at that. It's mostly sideways in recent months. And Inside Tech Pivot, uh, that's going on the 4th of December. And then next year, we've got Premier Investments in January. Anything can happen between now and then. And Origin Energy on the 12th of Jan. Goodness knows what's going to happen there. But let's go back a month to the stocks that were going X. Uh, in October and see how they went before and since. So this first vertical red line is the X dividend date. The second one is the dividend paid date. So Reese Limited was downtrending um, on the X dividend date. It actually opened higher and closed a fraction below the day before. And then in the following days, kept falling before rallying again. I started looking at this a couple of years ago, hoping I could capture some dividends, do some dividend harvesting around the ex-dividend date. And some of you might have seen my, my presentation on this uh, and how it didn't work. It's an absolute flop. Uh, Horizon Oil, that fell a lot on the ex-dividend date. Wham Capital went X on the 17th of October. That fell and kept falling. Uh, Wham Leaders. Newcrest Mining, that was all over the shop. At the Reject Shop, New Hope Corporation, nice uptrend, and then fell. And just out of curiosity, how much did it fall? Let's put a trend ruler on here from there to there. It fell 55 cents or eight and a half percent. The dividend was 30 cents. So the dividend was 30 cents. It fell by 55 cents. Then kept falling some more. Acro Limited, ACF. It actually went up on the ex dividend date. How about that? Opened lower and rallied, but still closed below the day before. Bank of Queensland, big, big fall. Brickworks Limited, down, up, down. Mm. Sol Pat, 17th of November. So that, that list of stocks going X, most in October and, and one in November, that's what was known uh, in early early October. So any that are now in this list, the November list that weren't in the other one, have been announced since I put that list together a month ago. Anyway, that's that one. Back to the agenda. Any questions about that before we move on? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, the December meeting. Uh, we're doing the Melbourne meeting on the 12th of December if you've got a calendar handy, Tuesday the 12th. And I'd suggest we do this webinar a week later, as we often do, on Tuesday the 19th of December, which is one week earlier than normal. I'm planning to get back to the Tuesday routine. And as I said at the start of the session, in terms of meeting dates for 2024, the Melbourne group are happy to continue the, the latest, the current routine third Tuesday of the month. Uh, and if you're all happy to do likewise, we can continue with the fourth Tuesday of the month through 2024. So the third Tuesday of the month 
the Melbourne, except in December when we do it a week earlier, and the webinar on the fourth Tuesday. Does anyone have any comment about that? I'm just making some notes, meeting dates, 2024, 4th Tuesday, um, for webinar. Any comments, anyone? No? No, suits me. Very good. Um, the other general business items there are triggers, uh, prompts in case anybody wants to ask about it or talk about them, the Google Drive, as I said, David's slides and others, including Des's from last month and others, they're up in Google Drive. David's will be there shortly. Uh, tech tips, this is an item on the agenda from a few years ago, uh, smartphone apps. If anyone has a smartphone app that's worth talking about, I'd be happy to add it to the list, the growing list of apps at the end of the minutes. And here's a question, are there any news uh, books or seminars or movies that are worth watching, uh, reading or visiting? Dun, 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 dun. I uh, try Dumb Money, about the, the GameStop thought squeeze. Quite amusing. I was watching it last night. Bill, it, it, the guys in the Melbourne meeting talked about it. Um, yeah. And when they did, no one had actually seen it. Um, what did you think of it? Well, just amusing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing heavy duty. But, uh, well, greed, you know, fear of missing out, and uh, yeah, when to exit. I think it's going to go higher and higher. And <laughs> well, interesting, yeah. It's it's supposed to be uh, based on the true story of the the GameStop fiasco that they had. Um, couple of years ago. Now, I'm not sure when I play this video, I can hear it. I'm not sure if you guys can. Um, I'll play it for a moment and then ask you if you can hear this too. Sometimes these things don't work over the over GoToMeeting. Did you hear that? The soundtrack? Could you hear? Could you guys hear that? No, I, I couldn't, couldn't hear it. Nah. Mm. Nah. Yes. All right. I'll try never to play a movie while we're doing this webinar, unless I can work out how to make it. Um, uh, microphone speakers. Speakers. What about now? Hear the music then? No. Uh. I think we can go and have a look ourselves. Yes, I think that's going to be the case. Okay. Um, Phil, thanks for mentioning that. Um, someone someone did say, or I read somewhere, that in the movie they've taken the liberty of, um, of dramatising some of it, so it's not strictly true all the way through. But never mind. It's, it's supposed to be entertaining. Uh, that's all I've got for tonight. Is there anything else that anybody would like to talk about or ask or raise before we move on? This is the last session until um, four weeks time, three weeks time, when we'll have a, a session before Christmas. And that'll be the last one for the year. And I might as well stop recording. We don't need it now. <laughs>